up guys, GD here. So I've been meaning to make this video from a while now. I've had the Axe FX for over a year and a half now. And over this course of time, I've dialed on a lot of tones and I've learned quite a few quick quirks or tools or tricks or tips that I found within the Axe Edit, which are helpful in terms of dialing in a good tone. So this video is all about sharing those tips with you. There are a lot of them, but in this video, we'll look at top three of them, which are really, really helpful to me. But but before we go into the video, I want to give an honorable mention to Mr. Adam Wilkie, who's made a contribution to the channel by donating to my PayPal account. Thank you so much, Adam. I hope I pronounced your name right. And in case you're wondering how to get an honorable mention on this video, on this channel, to be honest, go ahead and make a contribution to the PayPal account linked in the description box below to keep the channel up and running, to support the presets, to support the content in case you like it or in case you're learning something from this channel, I really, really appreciate that and give a shout out to you as well in my upcoming videos. All right, enough of that. Let's jump into the Axe Edit and do this right way. All right, guys, so I've got the Axe Edit loaded in front of me. And for reference, I am playing my Doesn't Matter guitar. It's got the Doesn't Matter pickups, Doesn't Matter strings, and I'm playing the Doesn't Matter amp you get the drift right because none of that matters this video is not about tone it's not about amp it's not about what guitar i'm playing this video is all about helping you find those tools which can help you dialing in the tone and not dialing in the actual tone so let's get right into it the first tip that i want to give you guys is the looper now this is a very handy tool and most of you i think if you're a guitar player you probably already know what a looper is but in this case the use case is slightly different i want to show you guys how you can use the looper to basically tweak your tone and not end up hurting your fingers and tiring by playing the same part again and again for a thousand times now with the looper you always want to put it at the start of your signal chain and i'll explain why so i'll move the compressor up here by the way this is a stock preset stock preset number 95 love this preset it's called ej clean i think it's eric johnson's clean tone but anyway so i'll put the looper here in the beginning of the signal chain and now what will happen the reason i asked you to put it in the beginning of the signal chain is because whenever you record some part of the guitar right now using the looper it's going to record right from your input directly into the looper so what you're recording is pretty much the di signal of your guitar after going through an input gate to be honest now there'll be parts where you're trying to figure out a particular tone and you have a part which you'll keep playing again and again tweaking a few things playing it again tweaking a few things like me and probably you'll end up hurting your fingers and you will get really, really tired. But the looper is here to the rescue and it's going to save you. So let's just quickly record a quick part and then we'll go through what happens after that. All right. So I'm going to turn on the guitar, hit record and here we go. Obviously, you'll be playing a much more nicer part than what I played. But anyways, that should do it. So I've got the part recorded. Now what will happen is that I'm going to play the recorded part by using this play button over here. And you can even link it to a controller if you have a foot controller. But I'm going to stop rambling and I'm going to show you that I'm going to play the part and I'm going to change the settings in the amp or in the cab or whatever you want to change. And you will see the tone getting changed in real time. <laughs> So I'm going to push up the treble a bit, bring the mix down, a little bit of drive, and you can see that the preset is kind of changing. And now you can see that the preset is kind of changing real time as I'm changing things and I'm not having to play a single damn thing, which is so, so good. You've got a live uh, guitar player for you, to be honest. <laughs> But anyways, let's stop it. And the other thing is, it's very helpful, is that you don't get the unwanted noise of your, you know, acoustic strings because when you're playing without, uh, when you're playing, you know, without your headphones on, you'll get, you'll get the sound of your strings, which kind of make the guitar sound a little sharper, to be honest, by default. But for me, I think this works really well. Or you can use headphones as well. So. Two problems solved with one block. Really helpful. Let's go ahead and look at tip number two. But before that, let's reset the preset. 
How are we going to do that? Go into the preset menu and say revert preset. The second tip I want to give you is blocks. There have been times where I've dialed in a very sweet chorus or a very sweet delay and I want to reuse that from a previous preset that I've dialed in when I'm doing a new preset and I want to reuse that delay from that particular preset and I find myself, you know, that how do I do it because now I'm in a preset which is not saved yet or maybe it's saved, the only way to do it is go into that preset, copy that, you know, delay or that chorus block from there, bring it back here and then paste it, which is a long, tedious process. And sometimes you don't even have that preset anymore. So what do you do? Well, in comes blocks to the rescue. So you've got this blocks library over here. What this basically is that if you like, for example, this chorus, dialed in really sweet and you really want to save this and reuse this in any of your presets you can just hit that plus icon here and click on save now keep in mind i think this is just an axe edit feature it's not probably applicable to the axe effects in a live scenario but i could be wrong so when you click save it gives you this pop-up you pretty much don't want to give it a name like chorus you want might want to give it a more meaningful name and then you click save it gets saved onto your hard drive now keep in mind this is persistent so if you restart your computer or or you restart your axe effects or you install new windows no if you install new windows you lose it <laughs> but anyways pretty much in any scenario you come back tomorrow the next day five days from now you have that block saved up so i've got a block saved up from a gentleman i found that block from the axe change and it was a very very good block for a tricorus sort of implementation all right now keep in mind that these blocks are blocks libraries specific to a particular block so if you've saved blocks for a trick uh, a quad chorus in this case the only blocks library that will show up is for that specific quad chorus so when i click on this i get the tri chorus here it's an implementation of uh, tri chorus in the xfx2 now this gentleman had it linked with his uh, foot controller i believe so i'm going to switch that off um, and then i'm going to turn on the block and this is how it sounds it sounds pretty sweet <laughs> that sound so anyways we are deviating from what we were talking about uh if you want to find links to this uh, tricorus block i'll link it down in the description box very very good and as you can see this is a very very handy tool as well and you can pretty much i think uh, delete a particular uh block as well in case you're not using it or you can go to the show folder and it'll show it reveal the folder where all of these are getting saved and you can delete it from there as well or save them somewhere else as a backup if you want to anyways that's pretty much what the blocks library is let's reset the preset <laughs> Anyways, we are back to the stock preset. Now, the third tip that I want to give you is all about snapshots. Now, it's pretty self-explanatory what snapshots are. Now, you'll have situations in your tone dialing like I've had before where you are in the middle of dialing in a tone and you've got uh, to point A and now you have tweaked it and you've saved it. You've, you've got point A saved on your uh, tone banks and now you've tweaked it a little bit and you've got to point B, but you're not sure whether you want to override that preset because you like point A as well and you don't want to override it by clicking on that save button. The only choice you have is to either save it to a new slot or export it, a bunch of things you can do, but that's where the snapshot comes really, really handy. What the snapshot does basically is just takes a snapshot of your entire signal chain and saves it into memory. Now keep in mind that when you restart AxeFX or your computer, you'll pretty much end up losing that. I am pretty sure it does that, but I find it really, really handy. So let's go ahead and try it out. For this amp, let's say I want to have a little bit more drive and a little bit more travel and slightly less mids. And this is how we are sounding. Maybe I like it slightly more, but I'm not sure whether I like it with the compared to what I had saved earlier, which was the stock preset. Now I can go ahead and click that button there. It's gonna say snapshot saved. And now if I go ahead and reset the preset, I come back to the original state. Now I can try this out, how it's sounding. but I now want to try that snapshot. So what you can do is right click on that 
and say load snapshot. Now I've got other snapshots here before this video as well when I was trying it out, but it's sorted in chronological order. So the latest one is gonna be on the top. And when you click that, what it's gonna do is load all of the signal chain settings that you changed. I just changed the amp, but you could have changed 10 things in the preset and it would have saved all of that. So you can see the gain is pushed up, the drive is pushed up, the mids are pushed down, the trebles, whatever changes we made are pretty much saved in there. So that's pretty much the snapshot, a really, really helpful tool to kind of snapshot your preset for the momentary and do some sort of A-B testing and see whether it's sounding good. <laughs> In this case, I think I like the stock preset more. <laughs> Let's go ahead and reset the preset again. A couple of bonus tips I wanna give you. In case ever you want to swap two blocks on your signal chain, you can drag the one and place it on the other one. What we'll do is basically swap those two blocks, keep the signal chain intact, and now the chorus is now before the cab, and if you wanna revert it back, you can actually do that by just dragging them on each other. There are times when you want to move an entire column to make a space for your other blocks to come in. Use these sliders here. They are really helpful. And now you've moved your chorus block by two blocks in the two columns in the signal chain and you've made more space. So a couple of more tips. There are a lot of other tips that I have to share with you guys. If you want to learn more, leave a comment for me down below. If you want to hear more of these tips, I'll be more than happy to share them. And in case you haven't already done so, go ahead and like this video and make sure you click that subscribe button in case you aren't subscribed yet and ring that bell as well and until i see you guys in the next video keep rocking guys cheers Bye -bye.